OP. Just get to smelling better. You can use my deodorant. Just sort it out, man. Oh, you let him use your deodorant. Oh! Ew! Dude! What the f- Hello, friends, and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact, and it's totally science. I'll go ahead and look it up. <laughs> Today we're jumping into r slash neckbeard stories. It's actually from my personal subreddit r slash red x reads, which I haven't mentioned in a while because I've been trying to speed through the intro, but you know what? I'm gonna take my time with this one. <laughs> this is Mudbeard, written by Luca, was a race car driver. Very cool dude, very active in the Discord, also a patron. So yes, he's collecting all of the uh, Discord infinity rolls. <laughs> infinity stone rolls, yeah. There are many colors, and you want to collect them all, because I guess that's just human nature or something. <laughs> this seems like a pretty cool one, just based on the, the thumbnail art alone. I hope that people will enjoy it. So let's go ahead. We'll get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way, and then we will dive right into some of this Neckbeard Stories cringe. Mudbeard, part one. The Fateful Encounter. Yeah, you think Mudbeard would be like a guy who pooped his pants or something, but instead it's just a guy who plays multi-user online dungeons or whatever it's called. Luca and I, apparently both really old, <laughs> at least old enough to remember uh, playing on MUDs. My MUD of choice was Ardwolf, and it's actually still running. <laughs> I can go log into my old character right now, which is astonishing to say the very least. Anyways. Hello, <laughs> Reddit, readers, guys, gals, and all the beautiful colors of our rainbow. Yeah, we got a rainbow coalition of the willing. Welcome to you, user Luca was a race car. <laughs> was a race car. You know what race car is spelled backwards? Race car. <laughs> kind of a non sequitur. Uh, you're humble OP here on a throwaway account, but I'm not sure that that matters doesn't. Today, we're going to start the short saga of Mudbeard, a beard who checked all of the classic beard boxes, including the beard and fedora, read Trilby. Today's episode is the fateful meeting and the mystery of the missing cheese. <laughs> Sounds like one of those grocery store mystery novels. Yeah, all right. I suppose both of these encounters were fateful, as implied by the title. <laughs> Let's get the warnings out of the way. Neckbeards are gross, and they do gross things. There is also some mention of suicide here. You guys can feel free to nope out whenever you need to. As I always say, there is no shame in that. I'm not here to force you to listen to stuff you don't want to listen to. Although, if you do decide to stick it through with me, I thank you for that. Let's get into our cast list. We've got OP, that's a me, <laughs> young, at least at the time, in a toxic relationship and desperate to help someone fill the growing void in my soul. Lily was the growing void in my soul. <laughs> oh boy. Toxic relationship and the neck beard. We're just getting, when it rains, it pours, you know? What a treasure, what a treat. <laughs> we also have mud beard. Today's object of study, relatively harmless, if not uh, a little bit lecherous. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of lecherous neck beards out there. <laughs> I mean, if, okay, if he's harmless on the outside, that's great. But inside, he's a little bit lecherous, which means he's not necessarily as harmless. If he thought he could get away with some things, I'm sure he would do some things. You know what I'm saying? So I got my eye on you, mud beard. Anyways. Before we get into the meat and potatoes of this beardy buffet, there needs to be some backstory. First, a mud for the uninitiated stands for multi-user dungeon. They were one of the first online MMOs. Think text-based adventure games like Zork, but multiplayer on the internet. I knew Mudbeard for years. We had known each other since I was in high school, albeit entirely online. And honestly, a mud it is pretty fun. <laughs> if you could stand a text-based adventure game that requires a lot of grinding. 
Along with Lily, we three played on a Dragon Ball Z mud, on which I was the head RP administrator. Oh, snap. Look at you doing big things, enforcing the rules and whatnot. Hey, why aren't you in character? Get back here. You go into mud jail. <laughs> <laughs> I organized and ran roleplay events for the mud. Now, Lily, she was the one for me. You sure about that? <laughs> you gotta be sure about that. <laughs> Are you sure about that? We had the same interests. A love of Gundam Wing and its soundtrack, DBZ, and Weebery in general. I realize now, almost 20 years beyond the darkness, the truth about my relationship with her. I was simply in love with the idea of her, and her in reality was, well, different. <laughs> That's how it goes a lot of times, you know? I see a lot of these comments, they're like, oh, uh, Pokimane, she's a, a wonderful girl and such and such, like, yeah. But if you live with somebody, you get to see, like, all the ugly parts and everything, like... <laughs> <laughs> Don't get too close to your heroes or or your your fetish models, I guess is what I'm saying. Not that Pokemon's one of those, but you know what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> That's a story for another day, but it will be relevant here. Depression is a hell of a drug, and boy, was I addicted. Yeah, I, I still don't think that I've completely kicked the habit, but making these videos does help, at least a little bit. <laughs> Throughout most, read all, of this story, I was standing on the rain-slicked precipice of beardery myself. You're in good company, my friend. I have gazed into that Cheeto-stained, accented maw, and it stared back, beckoning with tendy tendrils <laughs> to come and join them. And I nearly jumped. It is hard to resist the call of a good tendy, I will tell you that. But I'm proud of you for holding fast, my friend. <laughs> uh, Mudbeard at the time was harmless. He was very awkward and very much looked up to me as head RP because he wanted to be like me. I was fairly charismatic. I was even charming in some ways, at least online. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that counts 100%. <laughs> I'll let you have it, though. In real life, I was an awkward, euphoric goth kid in the late 90s, living in a small New Mexico village whose friends I could count on one hand. Had I grown up elsewhere, maybe I'd have turned out different. Who really knows? I think everybody could say that about themselves. But the truth is, I would never change the past. I'm glad it molded me into who I am. And I mean, goth kid, that's a pretty cool aesthetic. The punk kids that I was with used to hang out with the goth kids under the stairs. <laughs> and we go talk shit about the emo kids. High school was weird, man. <laughs> but yeah, I think you were a bit ahead of your time. Uh, uh, late 90s. I didn't get into all of that until like early 2000s, I suppose. But anyways, let's go back. Let's find out. Enter TARDIS Noises. Wow, hey, now now we're back again, or something like that. <laughs> I was now in my mid-twenties. Lily and I had finally taken the plunge to live together after some on and off again relationship drama, both online and offline. Ugh, you think moving in together is gonna fix any of that? <laughs> it's not gonna happen. It's like people who's like, instead of breaking up, we should just have a kid. <laughs> Yeah, bro. That'll fix everything. <laughs> it doesn't make it any easier. You need to get along before any of these things happen. Long story short, though, I had a short stint in Memphis to try and be close to her. Some accidental time as a pimp. Yeah, this actually happened. And Hurricane Katrina ripped her from my fragile gasp. Do we have the story about you <laughs> spending some accidental time as a pimp? <laughs> uh, it reminds me of that episode of King of the Hill. Hey, Kill becomes a pimp for a minute, too. Peggy, give me the hat. 
I don't know if it's neckbeard related or not, but I really do want to hear that story. <laughs> So, we lived in Oklahoma, now, a good middle ground between New Mexico and Mississippi. We had recently purchased a house, and things were, well, they were on a steady decline. She was aggressive, emotionally abusive, and controlling. Oh, Luca, Luca, Luca. <laughs> Did you think any of these things were going to change when you took out a $100,000 plus loan to buy a house? <laughs> <laughs> it's only gonna get even worse because she thinks she's got you by the, the short and hairies, right? <laughs> you should have run, but you know, I guess hindsight's twenty twenty. We learn and we grow, and this was part of the learning and growing process, unfortunately. Strangely, it was when we purchased the house that this 180 happened. See? See? She thinks she's got you now. He's like, whatever mating season's over, give me your money. <laughs> Before then, we were living in a tiny two-bedroom apartment, and it was peaches and sunshine. I suppose now that she figured I was stuck with her, she could let the mask slip. That was neither here nor there. Indeed, I suppose not. It's not a legbeard story, but uh, maybe we should hear some more about <laughs> this person. Although OP and I are on the same page as far as why she let the mask slip. So, okay, I get it. It's slipping. She's now terrible. <laughs> this is really only relevant because I was in the process of finding out how much ambient and booze you can down before you stop waking up. But this is a story about Mudbeard, not Lily. Ah, oh, that's a bad road to go down, OP. I'm glad you didn't succeed at that. Never combine those two things. Booze can do what Ambien does if you drink enough of it. <laughs> I don't mean the joke. I just, you know, a little bit of levity. <laughs> but I do digress. I was on AOL Instant Messenger. Oh, AIM, I remember. Which was the style at the time. <laughs> Simpsons reference. <laughs> oh, God. Which was the style at the time. Uh, That's so good. When Mudbeard sent me an instant message. Mudbeard? Uh, hey, man. Hey, how's it going? OP? Not bad. Just finished up dinner. Haven't heard from you in a while. Have you been? Mudbeard? <laughs> Not so great. I'm getting kicked out. Oh, God. You invited him to move in, didn't you? <laughs> Don't do it. OP? That sucks, man. Got somewhere to go? Mudbeard? No, not really. Everyone I've asked has said no, and I have two weeks to find the place. Yeah, I'm sure you get it figured out in two weeks. Bye! <laughs> Bye, have a beautiful time. Uh, now here, my dear readers, is where my red flags would normally fly up. But I was, and still am in many regards, a person who has an unhealthy need to try and fix broken people. I knew what it was like to live in desperate poverty. I knew what it was like to wonder where your next meal or even roof would be. So I tried to extend helping hands where I could. I believed in giving people the means to help themselves if they truly want to be better. Here, I made a mistake. Me and Lily had a discussion and decided that if an old friend was in need, then yeah, we needed to help. If a friend asked for your help, you're supposed to help them. Now, I would write a lot of people off, but if you have stuck around, earned the title of friend, I mean, I'll fight and die for you, you know? Moving into my house, that's a pretty big ask, and, you know, we're going to have some discussion about what you're doing to get up and out of my house. I'm also quite curious as to the reason that he got kicked out in the first place. Because that's a, a pretty big extenuating circumstance on whether you do or don't get to come into my house. Is it just like uh, an unfortunate series of events or were you just lazy and didn't pay the rent? In which case, you're probably not going to start trying to pay rent again if you're living in my house. So yeah, I'm going to have to think about that one long and hard. But the truth is, most of the people that I'm friends with are, are hustlers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they don't know how to stop the grind and... Of course, I respect that. That's why we're friends. If you're a lazy turd, you probably won't be bestowed the friend title. 
That's just how it works, as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, I would help, but only if. <laughs> OP? Well, if you can get yourself a bus ticket, Lily and I do have a spare bedroom that you can have here in Oklahoma, Mudbeard. No way, dude. <laughs> you live with Lily? That's awesome. OP? Yeah, we're pretty damn happy. <laughs> Uh, it was a long road, but we got there. <laughs> Are you lying to yourself or lying to Mudbeard in this moment? Something tells me that it's probably both. <laughs> Mudbeard, you'd really take me in. That would be so cool. We could watch anime and game and stuff. No, 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 no. We could look for a job for you. <laughs> it's what we could do. We could focus on kicking back and gaming when you have employment and a place of your own. If you think this is going to be party time, you're wrong. OP? Yeah, you bet, man. I'll give you three months rent free to help set yourself up. We've got a lot of places hiring around the house within walking distance. And we won't charge you too much for rent once you are on your feet. How's 200 a month for the room sound? We'll feed you till you got a job. This is far too kind already. And if we know Neckbeards, we know he's just gonna take advantage of this whole situation, become a, a parasite on your guys' entire lives, which uh, Lily's already taken the place of a parasite. So OP's gonna get sucked dry pretty shortly. Living with a neckbeard and a legbeard, it's like unfortunate nookie, but from a dude's perspective or something. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully it doesn't last for seven years. Anyways, <laughs> Budbeard says, Deal! I'm so excited, man! We were so close in the mud! It'll be just like old times! Yeah, except we're adults trying to pay the rent. Get your shit together. <laughs> I don't know why I'm such a cynical person. I like to have a fun time just like anybody else, but, uh... Yeah, this ain't gonna work for me. <laughs> Even with a good friend, I would lay out my, my terms and conditions quite flat. <laughs> Anyways, we had idle conversation until it was socially acceptable for me to disengage. More TARDIS noises. <laughs> Fast forward two weeks, and I was at a Greyhound station waiting for Mudbeard to arrive in my truck. Now... I'd never met this man in real life, <laughs> so I just wrote his username on some poster board and taped it to my windows and left the doors unlocked. <laughs> That's a great idea. I, I'm with that. Uh, I don't know if any of, I don't like any of this. Oh, God, OP. Taking in a stranger off the internet. Ooh, <laughs> I would do it. I would do it for, like, my mods, people that I know relatively well. I guess OP knows Mudbeard from the mud relatively well. But that stay would be, like, you know, a week or a weekend, not three months. And I expect you to get a job and start renting a room and, and supporting the house. You know he's never going to do it. Although maybe I'm just prejudging him because it is in a Neckbeard story. Who knows? He could be the best roommate ever. Uh... <laughs> I guess we'll see. <laughs> Soon, my passenger door opened, and then it smelled. That smell. That smelly kind of smell that smells smelly. <laughs> the smelly smell that smells smelly. It was like someone had baked butt flakes in a used football helmet. <laughs> It gave it a drizzle of sun-dried cottage cheese with just a dash of axe. <laughs> <laughs> that is evocative. Mudbeard was shaped like a pear, a trilby atop his stem of a head that gave way to beady, bugged eyes and a beard that was somehow both thick and patchy. <laughs> and yes, like a bacterial colony, it had migrated to his neck. <laughs> I mean, that's just bad genetics or something like that. Thick and patchy. What the hell's going on there? You got a Joe Dirt thing going on or something. 
I had done my best to just shrug off the smell. Having spent a fair amount of time using that treasured US public transit, I can attest that once you're off that metal tube, you do stink to high heaven. No, no, this is just the first warning sign and you're doing your best to sweep it under the rug because now you know you're essentially locked in. You have this creature in your car and it expects to go to your home to live. Ah, this is, this is a nightmare. <laughs> Mudbeard. Hey, man. Luca? He wheezed, out of breath. OP? Yeah, but just call me OP. He never called me OP. <laughs> Load up and let's get going. Mudbeard? Can you help? This is all really heavy. <laughs> Uh, bro, you brought it this far, loaded into the truck, goddammit. But our OP does oblige, only to discover that he somehow lugged his entire desktop PC setup into the Greyhound, replete with a CRT monitor. <laughs> uh, he looked like a stiff breeze would send him into cardiac arrest, so yeah, I loaded his PC up in the back seat, his duffel bag of clothes into the bed, and off we went toddling down the freeway back to our humble abode oh god you can tell a lot about people by what they pack all you've packed are, are a pc and a set of clothes what happened to like hygiene products and such <laughs> do you know what those are they're, they're pretty useful actually and i don't understand why you need a desktop pc anyways if you're just playing a mud even in the the 90s, I'm pretty sure you could play that on like a netbook. <laughs> Spend 90 bucks, get a netbook, you're good. Uh, anyways, that passenger seat would never be the same. <laughs> Thank you for your sacrifice. <laughs> uh, eventually, we did arrive at his new home and unloaded his things. There was a spare bed in the spare bedroom already and a small desk. I helped him bring his things upstairs to the room. We were coming back downstairs when, at that time, Lily emerged from the kitchen. Now, Lily is beautiful. Not just by my love-stained eyes, but in the eyes of anyone who saw her. Most frequent response to a friend meeting her was, Wow, how'd you land that one? Holy shit! <laughs> Long brown hair, fair Hispanic features, 5 foot 2, and looked strikingly like a young Selma Hayek if she was sporting a B cup. It was easy to be smitten with her appearance, and smitten Mudbeard was. Oh boy, here we go. It's gonna be the most awkward love triangle ever. <laughs> you want her? You know what? You have her. She's abusive as hell, and uh, you'll probably sit there and take it because of how she looks. So good. Be happy together. I'm moving out now. <laughs> Mudbeard? Holy. I mean, Ray? Her online handle, Lily. Hey, Mudbeard, you can call me Lily. He never did. <laughs> Welcome to our home. She smiled pleasantly, her eyes shining with malice, barely hidden behind an aura of kindness. You don't fall for that one. I know all about you, Lily. Mudbeard's eyes lingered on Lily for longer than I would have liked. I mean, I'm used to people staring at her. He was stunning, but he had a lecherous look that he made either no attempt to hide or maybe simply wasn't aware of. Yeah, either way, just call it out. If it makes you uncomfortable, be like, hey man, why are you looking at my lady that way? And then he probably backs down. But if you have to fight it out, then you fight it out. You think I'm scared of Mudbeard? I ain't. The only thing I'm scared of uh, regarding Mudbeard is maybe getting his smell on me. <laughs> <laughs> so OP instead... Uh, decides to just change the subject. All right, so now that you're settled in, Mudbeard, why don't you take a shower? That Greyhound ride did not do your hygiene any favors, and frankly, you smell like your body odor has body odor. <laughs> Mudbeard laughed. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of late, so I'm going to sleep before I wash off. It's been a long day, and I'm tired. Ew. Ew! You're gonna roll around smelling like that in a bed that you have to use repeatedly? Ew! 
Uh, nasty. <laughs> How hard is it to go rinse off? It takes like less than three minutes. You can do it real fast, okay? I promise. No offense, nothing like that, but I can't allow you to exist in my house when you smell like that. Soon the whole house is gonna smell like that. So do as I ask or get back on the bus. God, maybe I am an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is I'm a bit of a control freak. I just want to see things done my way. I'm slowly learning to let go, but this is not a thing that I would let go of. No, no. <laughs> OP says, uh, all right, bro. No, not all right. <laughs> just get that stink off you before you go job hunting tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's totally gonna happen. <laughs> Hope floats, my friend. Lily and I spent time in our living room. Our preferred activity was to either have some anime playing or YouTube going on the home theater PC while we played games on our laptops together. At the time, Minecraft was getting popular, and we were both really into it. We found a server with heavy RP elements, so we were like pigs in shit. See, you guys like the same things. You really could have gotten along if she wasn't a succubus. <laughs> it's too bad she turned out to be a succubus. As the hours whittled on, we both noted that Mudbeard's aim status remained online. Well past midnight, and he had arrived at around 8. Regardless, we retired to bed as we had work in the morning. We did both work at the same place. We woke up the next day and trundled off to work, bleary-eyed. As we returned home, Mudbeard's door was closed. So I came upstairs and knocked, quietly. He's been sleeping all day. He's been up all night. How could you not put this one together, knowing what a gamer is like? <laughs> Neither of my kids get away with a goddamn thing regarding, like, hiding their tablet or Nintendo Switch. Because I know what a gamer's like. You're just always hungry for more. And I mean, comparing him to my kids might seem weird, but essentially you are agreeing to parent this guy. It would be cool if you just pulled in a functional roommate, but we both know for a fact that that is not what happened at all. <laughs> so after knocking quietly, Mudbeard opened the door... Once again, I got my olfactory senses dick-punched. Mudbeard, obviously annoyed. Why? OP, trying not to retch. Hey, bro. Uh, did you go job hunting today? Or, uh, from the smell of it, you haven't. Or if you did, you ain't getting any jobs. Bro, you need to shower. <laughs> Mudbeard. I was gonna, but I forgot to bring my bathroom stuff with me. Yeah, but he didn't get the computer. Bro, I'm just calling this one out note by note. <laughs> I see exactly what is going on here. And it's like a train wreck. I, I can't turn away. <laughs> OP. All right. Get in the truck. We're getting you some hygiene stuff. The grocery store is just down the road. We'll pick you up an application while we're there. Mudbeard reluctantly agreed. It looked like I had interrupted some PC gaming session, but I didn't care. Truck, store, soap, application, home. You really are going to have to drag him around like this every day, everywhere he goes. Even once he gets the job, you're going to have to drag him to work. <laughs> There's no way that this is sustainable. OP almost physically shoving Mudbeard into the upstairs bathroom as he leered down at Lily, who was decompressing from work. Shower! Now! I walked downstairs, satisfied that the nasal assaults would cease, at least somewhat. We put on some anime, opened our laptops, and let the blocky roleplay fun begin. Hey, you ever get into Roblox? The kids is really into Roblox. It's kind of legit, honestly. <laughs> About five minutes later, I would hear the shower turn off, and a toweled mudbeard quickly trundled back to his room, holding a bundle of clothes. I once again smiled. Even a neckbeard can change. <laughs> oh god, OP. I love how hopeful you are, but I don't know, man. Maybe, just maybe, he may even contribute to the household. <laughs> 
<laughs> One thing at a time. Let's start with baby steps. How about <laughs> after an hour, Lily and I decided that supper was upon us. We made spaghetti, making sure to make extra so Mudbeard could eat. OP shouting upstairs. Hey, Mudbeard, soup's on. Come get some grub. I heard the door open and heavy footfalls coming down our rapidly aging stairs. And then it hit us. The miasma. <laughs> Not only did he smell like everything I had described before, but with a spritzing of wet dog, I handed him a plate. Oh, God. How's it getting even worse? <laughs> Bacterial colonies love the rain. <laughs> Uh, OP says, dude, you know you have to use the soap and shampoo that I bought you to get clean, right? Mudbeard whines in indignation. Why are you being mean, Luca? I have a glandular problem. I can't help it. You might not be able to help it, but you can damn well try harder. Now, before you eat, get back in the shower. <laughs> You want to live here, you got to do it my way. Yeah, Red X is a jerk. I'd never want to live with them, etc., etc. But it's for the best. It's all for the greater good. <laughs> Don't you worry. You think I like forcing a grown-ass man to go rewash his asshole? I don't. <laughs> this is the situation that you've put us into. Uh. <laughs> so OP says, now... I am the sort to give people the benefit of the doubt, and that benefit was being used. OP, just get to smelling better. You can use my deodorant. Just sort it out, man. Oh, you let him use your deodorant. <laughs> oh! Ew! Dude! What the f***? <laughs> I can't. <sighs> Uh, that's probably the biggest cringe I've had so far in this story. <laughs> that is awful. You're sharing armpit bacteria at that point. You realize that. Your armpit is going to smell like Mudbeard's armpit. You've been infected. <laughs> Kill it with fire. <laughs> you need to find work, Mudbeard. And people won't hire you smelling like that. Speaking of, did you fill out the application that you got, Mudbeard? Yeah, man, I did. <laughs> I'll walk up there tomorrow and turn it in. And then you need to treat him like a little boy and say, show me the application. I don't believe you. <laughs> Although this is just night one, so OP probably hasn't completely checked out or given up hope. But it is a little sus. I must say that. And then off he rolled back up the stairs, wheezing audibly with every step. Lily and myself got back to gaming trying to use the wonderful smell of the spaghetti to cleanse our senses of Mudbeard's aura. Soon enough, it was time for bed again. And even sooner than that, it was time for work. It was getting harder for Lily to wake me up for reasons described at the beginning of our tale, but I eventually pried myself from the comfort of comforters and slid into some work clothes. I mean, it seems like you guys are living a happy little life. I, I would like some more context on Lily, you know? For as she was described, she doesn't seem that bad, but I guess that's just because this is Mudbeard's story, not hers. So, two days pass. Rather than risk the sensory cornucopia that was Mudbeard's scent, I asked Daily how things were going via AIM. Yeah, I'm sure he's not lying to you at all. <laughs> <laughs> We'd leave his food on the counter, and he would slink down to get it, quickly retreating back upstairs again. Ugh, what a fucking creeper. <laughs> Why don't you interact with the people who have so graciously opened their home to you? Our dishes would only return when we sternly asked for them back so they could be washed. He, of course, never offered to help. <laughs> Such a mess. It's already devolved so quickly. Another day passes. We decide on grilled cheese sandwiches and tomato soup for supper. Oh, what a combo. What a classic. I haven't had that in years. That's what I'm going to ask for dinner tonight. <laughs> Lily is digging in the fridge. Lily says, OP, where's the big block of cheese slices we got from Sam's last week? 
OP? Should be in the bottom drawer? Why? Lily? It's gone! OP? How? Lily, now investigating the kitchen. I don't freaking know! OP! The wrappers are in the trash! All of them! <laughs> OP? Do you think... Lily? Mud beard! <laughs> Uh, he's slinking around in the middle of the night like a rat, eating all the cheese in the fridge. <laughs> you can't make shit like that up, man. Oh, it's beautiful. And that, my dear readers, is where we will leave off for today. No apologies for any spelling slash grammar mistakes. Own your mistakes. Ooh, I like that attitude. <laughs> DBZ narrator. Will Mudbeard find a job? Will Lily and OP find the true cheese goblin? Will our hero stop drinking ambient sours? <laughs> Tune in next time for the next episode of Mudbeard Z! I don't know, man. From the story, life seems pretty cozy for OP. Kicking it with his, his lady, playing some Minecraft. I mean, she is abusive, apparently. We didn't see any of that in the story. But then for some reason, uh, he decides that he got to throw a monkey wrench in the plan. Like, I understand we, we've been online friends for a very good time. But how about you come for a visit first? I can vet you a little bit. OP was under no obligation to put himself into this situation. The fact that he did, okay, it does mean that he is a good person. But it also shows quite a bit of naivete. Although, you know, in your 20s, I, I suppose I could have seen myself doing the same thing. As a 30-year-old man, no. This is never going to fly. <laughs> uh, I'm just watching it unfold, and it is exactly how I thought that I would unfold. I'm not a mind reader. I'm just a humble beard scientist, all right? What I'm really interested in is, is seeing how OP gets himself out of this situation, and possibly if Lily ends up gravitating towards Mudbeard. Then they can both be miserable people together, and OP gets to be free. Isn't that beautiful? That's the happy ending I'm hoping for anyways. <laughs> but I guess we'll find out. In this moment, it came across my mind. Was I the cheese goblin? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Ew! I like them! I like goblins! Ah! Mudbeard Part 2. The Cheese Goblin Revealed! Oh, well, it wasn't much of a mystery in the last episode who ate all the cheese from the fridge. Now was it? <laughs> but maybe he's going to be revealed in uh, some other type of way that we can't quite discern yet. Hello, Reddit readers, guys, and gals, and all the colors of our beautiful rainbow. Your humble OP here. Hi, Luca was a race car driver. He drove so goddamn fast. Never did win no checker flag, but never did come in last. <laughs> Primus fans, anybody? All right, sweet. <laughs> in case you haven't read part one, here is the link. There's also the link to the video in the description if you are so inclined. Last time on Mudbeard Z. Mudbeard had moved into the home of OP and his girlfriend Lily after getting forcibly removed from his parental beard nest. Nesting here, he would leer at Lily, loom longingly over luxurious libations, and has yet to shower properly even once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, OP's been trying to be, like, really encouraging. Hey, bro, you're gonna get a job, right? Hey, bro, you're gonna take a shower, right? Mudbeard's like, oh, yeah, totally. Uh, in just a minute. <laughs> I gotta relax and unwind for a few weeks before I take the shower. Uh, good God, what a mess. He smells like an onion, had sexy time with some spoiled imitation crab. It's nice. Oh, God. <laughs> and he is uh, currently looking for work. Kinda. <laughs> An industrial-sized block of cheese had vanished. Who was at fault? Stay tuned and find out. Today's episode, The Cheese Goblin Revealed and the Laundry of Destiny. Oh, God, dude. It's just so horrible. Are you going to end up doing his laundry for him? 
I mean, I know Luke is a nice guy, but come on. We all have our limits, bro. <laughs> There's no need for all this. Uh, I don't know if I can stand it for very long. I need to gobble down some more trucker beard where the dude is just like a total hard ass towards the beardo. He's like, nope, no nonsense here. <laughs> But yeah, Luca, I mean, I can't fault him, you know, patron, author, Discord member, extreme pillar of the community. I love the dude, and indeed, hindsight is 2020. Disclaimers, of course, beards are, uh, gross. <laughs> so some gross things will be discussed. Also, there are mentions of suicide, at least in attempt. And I don't wish that on anybody, but it especially hurts when it's uh, our OP, that is attempting. A lot of times if it's the beard, I'll be like, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? But uh, I don't mean that. I want them to get better as well. Although it does seem that Mudbeard is pretty committed to uh, not getting better. Anyways, our cast, OP, that's -a me on the precipice of Beardry myself. Currently working out the LD50 of Ambien and beer. God, that's a terrifying combination, isn't it? <laughs> like I said in the last episode, you drink enough beer, it has the effect of an ambient. <laughs> but I think you gotta start drinking more and more beer, and really my liver just can't take it. We have Lily, uh, invalidation taken human form. I struggle to call her a leg beard. She was clean and very responsible. I was not those things as our relationship deteriorated. The way she treated me was untenable, but, uh, neither of us were perfect. Oh, come on, don't put the blame back on yourself. What is this supposed to be, a time of growth and, and self-reflection? What are you doing? <laughs> I guarantee you that Lily blames OP 100% for everything that happened. Never met her. She doesn't seem too legbeardy in the previous parts, but I don't know, man. She rough, to say the very least. <laughs> <laughs> Mudbeard, of course, is uh, our subject of today's story, and nesting Neckbeard. You shouldn't have let him nest. Why did you let him nest? <laughs> <laughs> Smash intro. Chris, former Air Force gangly Native American man with a glorious Fu Manchu and a fastidious nature. Soft-spoken, but unafraid of speaking his mind. Genuinely a good guy. OP still keeps in touch after all these years. Oh, smash intro, like a new challenger appears or uh, somebody joins the battle. I, I didn't do any of that, sorry. <laughs> My editor is off today. <laughs> he actually is, he's in Manila. I'm editing this video myself, which is why it looks um, less than up to par. But again, it be what it be. So, <laughs> with all that unnecessary exposition, at least on my part, OP's exposition, very necessary. <laughs> Let's go ahead and we'll dive into this fresh neck beard content. <laughs> it was just over a month since Mudbeard had arrived. <laughs> Uh, it's not getting any better, is it? <laughs> you really thought it would get better, but it's not getting better. He rarely left his nest, only leaving long enough to receive his daily supper offering and slink back upstairs. <laughs> Having free range of the home when we were at work or asleep. A big block of cheese had recently gone missing, and Lily was not the shrinking type. Upon finding out of the dastardly dairy despoiling, <laughs> OP loves that alliteration. Me too, my original channel Dayton does. That's alliterative. Anyways, Lily stormed up to Mudbeard's room and knocked furiously. Lily, furious, Mudbeard, open up! Some shuffling was heard and eventually the door was opened. Oh no, <laughs> hopefully the smell is enough to keep her back. Who will win in this battle of the beards? <laughs> uh, I stayed downstairs, but I had a ringside view of the confrontation from my comfy spot on our love seat. 
in this corner. Oh god, you really are gonna do it. Nice. <laughs> I'm about it. Five foot one and ninety-five pounds, the terrible tornado of Tulsa Lily And in the blue corner, five foot seven, three hundred pounds, the horny, unhygienic suspect cheese heister Mud Beard Round one Fight! <laughs> I wish they would just start brutalizing each other. Oh, they still might brutalize each other, but with words. And sometimes those are the scars that don't heal, am I right? <laughs> Mudbeard looking at Lily lecherously. Uh, what brings you up here? <laughs> he smiled, but it was quickly wiped away when Lily presented the trash can filled with cheese wrappers. <laughs> uh, you know, he's just gonna like tuck tail, give it a puppy dog eyes. Like whenever my dogs do anything bad, they know that they did bad. <laughs> They're just like, oh no. <laughs> uh, Dad's mad about this and I did it. Look at you, look at you. I know you're guilty just by looking at you. <laughs> Lily just says, explain. Mudbeard doing his best to look confused. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> You're not fooling anybody, dude. Lily thrusting the can forward for emphasis. The cheese, Mudbeard! You ate all of our fucking sliced cheese! <laughs> she screamed. <laughs> Uh, was it like fancy sliced cheese? Why is she so invested? I mean, I'll go buy you another pack of Kraft Singles if that's what you're about. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I guess it is the principle of the matter. I invited you into my home. I'm paying for all your shit, including your food and your rent, and you're still going to eat my cheese? Pack up. Get out. That's all I would really have to say about it. Mudbeard feigning shock. What? I didn't eat your cheese. What the hell? I haven't even been downstairs all day. <laughs> <laughs> You're a terrible actor, Mudbeard. But honestly, you probably should be uh, downstairs at least at some point during the day in order to get a job like you promised that you would do. This free ride is going to end so badly, and I am so looking forward to that. <laughs> Lily. Bullshit! Who else would have eaten it? Fucking who? Mudbeard! <laughs> She's pretty scary, isn't she? Mudbeard. I don't know. I, I swear. It was probably OP. Bruh. <laughs> What a dick move! You know in your heart that you did it and you're gonna pass it off on the person who like basically wanted to save you from living on the streets? If you thought I was joking about packing up and getting the hell out of here before, it, it's no longer a joke. You gotta go. <laughs> There's only three of us living here and you or I didn't do it. Ah <laughs> oh, yes, the process of elimination. Which does work pretty well, unless somebody's fucking lying, Mudbeard. <laughs> oh, so this is what the underside of a bus looks like. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro, he did you dirty. In that moment, no. We're not going to stand for this. You got to get out. I know you did it. You know you did it. It's just gone from like uh, a ringside love seat watching the match into now it's a royal rumble you're involved you better get in the ring <laughs> don't let yourself be thrown under a bus and just not push back that ain't cool now <laughs> here dear readers is where i'd like to stop time for a moment the seed of doubt was planted in this moment it came across my mind was i the cheese goblin <laughs> 
Oh no! Ew! I don't like them! I don't like goblins! Ah! Uh, was Mudbeard telling the truth? Jesus, my whole world's been flipped upside down. I just presumed the beard was guilty. Good God. <laughs> I had been taking liberal amounts of Ambien and chasing it with beer. I would often sleepwalk because of this, and once I even sleep cooked, the result would be censored in Japan. <laughs> I could not recall these incidents, but... Lily would often recount something if I happened to wake her up with my drug-induced zombie state. It was not outside the realm of possibility that I, in my tempting of fate and thinly disguised, yet well-hidden and numerous, suicide attempts, I perhaps might have ate an entire block of sliced cheese in one sitting and promptly went back to sleep. <laughs> Who hasn't been there before? I don't even do it while sleepwalking. I'm shameless. I don't gotta sneak around my house like a goblin. I'll walk downstairs, eat a whole bag of shredded cheddar, and place it on the top of the trash. No burying the bag or anything. I'm just like, I bought this cheese. <laughs> I bought this cheese, I eat this cheese. Can't nobody tell me nothing. <laughs> Alright, comments, I need you to place some bets. Do you think it was actually OP, or, or are you sticking to your guns here and saying that it's Mudbeard? I think I'm going to stick to my guns. You know, first instinct is always correct in that. And yeah, it probably was Mudbeard that ate the cheese, like... <laughs> I understand sleepwalking and all this, but... How else can the beard maintain such a malodorous aura without fueling it with whey and, and curdled protein and, and cheese? He ate all the cheese. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna double down on that. <laughs> uh, now, this was unlikely, to be fair, because Lily was a light sleeper. And if I peed too loud in the middle of the night, she'd shout at me. <laughs> Bro, that reminds me of that meme. It's like Sonic getting out of the shower. He's like, are you fried chicken, baby? Ah, just kidding. You make a lot of noise when you pee. I like that. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Why is this in my brain? <laughs> so, yeah, getting shouted at by your girlfriend for frying chicken in the middle of the night. <laughs> I very much doubt that I could have done all this cheese shenanigans without waking her up. But the doubt plagues me to this day. Oh my god, we st we're, we're never going to find out. <laughs> uh, it's just a mystery. But the title said that the cheese goblin was revealed. Don't do this to me. <laughs> <laughs> Lily turned her rage to me for only a moment. OP, did you eat the fucking cheese? OP, no. I don't think I'd poop for a week if I ate that much cheese. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, you can do it. I believe in you. When you finally do take a dump after that week, it's going to be a beefy boy. Don't try to waffle stomp that one. You're going to break your ankles. <laughs> <laughs> Lily. Mudbeard, we know it was you. Now, if you do it again, I don't give a shit what LP thinks or says. You're out on your ass. We buy things for you to eat when we're not cooking. Eat that! You gave us a list. Eat your own crap, Mudbeard. And for fuck's sake, take a shower! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's kind of a non sequitur, but also not really. We've been telling you for a month already. <laughs> you fucking stink and your room is disgusting! Clean up! Now! <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll consider it. I just need to relax for another couple weeks first. <laughs> uh, I don't think he's ever going to do it. OP and Lily are finally going to have enough. Put this dude out on his ass. And the whole room is going to have to be sanitized with fire. <laughs> uh, 
Now, Lily does have a knack for putting the fear of God into people when she lets her mask slip. Everybody, all this talk about masks, bro. It feels like all this mask talk emanated from Stealthbeard. Or is that just like the first time that I've seen it mentioned as a metaphor so heavily, and now I'm noticing it more and more? Either way, pretty wild. <laughs> uh, Lily stormed back downstairs, trash can in hand, and put it back in its place. We ran to the store for more cheese. <laughs> Before we left, we asked Mudbeard if he'd like us to drop off the application that he had filled out for the store. Oh, God. You're just babying the hell out of this guy. Do you want mommy to go drop off your job applications for you? You're never gonna get the job, bitch. Walk your happy ass down there and give him the freaking application. <laughs> Having somebody else apply for you is the best way to never get the job. But all that doesn't really matter anyways, because Mudbeard says, Oh, uh, I, uh, I, I lost it. <laughs> Can you get me a new one, Mommy and Daddy? <laughs> he didn't call him Mommy and Daddy. It just kind of feels that way to me right now. God! I was already out of patience for, for this dude in the first episode, but it just, it keeps on going. God, what a ride! <laughs> OP, how the fuck do you lose an application when you don't goddamn go anywhere? Ooh, now OP's like turning up the heat too. I love this. Mudbeard, you ain't gonna last forever. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Your online friend who was goodly enough to take you in is already getting sick of your crap. Mudbeard, I probably accidentally threw it away or something, man. I don't know. Oh yes, because you're so cleanly and fucking fastidious, aren't you? <laughs> I don't think anybody's buying that one. Now, I had never seen a garbage bag come down from that room in the month that he had lived there so far. So I was, as the kids today would say, quite sus, but I let it go. <laughs> How do you do, fellow kids? <laughs> we returned from the store with application in hand, and as I was walking up the stairs, Mudbeard emerged from his nest garbage bags in hand. OP, oh, hey man, doing a little spring cleaning? His stench hit me like Mike Tyson deleting a toddler. <laughs> huh. Yeah, that's a funny mental image. Also really sad, <laughs> but I like it for some reason. Mudbeard, yeah, I felt like I should after Lily got mad at me. Bro, OP's been ragging you on this whole time, but it takes just the woman blowing up one time, and you're like, oh, if I clean up, that'll impress her. Mr. Steal Your Girl over here. How you gonna be Mr. Steal Your Girl when you can't even wash yourself? <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> Mudbeard says, yeah, I felt like I should after Lily got mad at me. Uh, you you should have because it's a normal human function. You should have because you don't want to live in a sty. Right? R right? <laughs> Tell me I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> OP, about time. Next, do something about that smell. I'll leave the application on your desk. Mudbeard interrupted me. Uh, no, that's fine. I'll take it and fill it out. You don't have to do that. Oh, he doesn't want you to see the desk. Hmm. I would say sneak around, but it seems like he never leaves his goddamn room, so... <laughs> 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 that could be a, a very difficult thing. I bet he's creeping on Lily's, like, Facebook photos or something weird like that. He awkwardly shuffled the bags he had into one hand and held out the remaining greasy paw for the application, which I handed to him. Off he trundled down the stairs, bags and application in hand. I returned to the kitchen to help Lily prepare supper, though that was hardly necessary, 
fucking grilled cheese and tomato soup ain't hard. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't peek into the room just a little bit and see what he had on his desk that was so very secret. I don't think I could resist myself. You see him waddling out with the trash bags? You're like, I don't know. I got a couple minutes. He walks slow. <laughs> Mudbeard then returned empty-handed and went back upstairs. The application was nowhere to be found. <laughs> uh, he just threw it in the trash with the rest of it. <laughs> Whether he did it on purpose or not, that is, that is hilarious. I would explode on him. I mean, I probably would have exploded on him about 20 times by this point, but... Come on, OP! Let's see some of that heat! <laughs> I want a little more! Ever the patient man, I assume that he folded it and put it in his pocket or something. I try to see the best in people. Yeah, that's something of a theme on this channel, I guess. I'm just ever the cynic. I'm like, no, he, he definitely threw it away. And as it turns out, a lot of the time, I'm right. And if I'm ever proven wrong, then I get to say, oh, what a pleasant surprise. <laughs> it's much easier to be a cynic than it is to be a positive person. So I do admire positivity, but I can't do it for the life of me. <laughs> I've tried. <laughs> so then uh, we all ate and began our nightly ritual of Minecraft roleplay fun times. Always uh, safe for work, if you're wondering. Oh god. Oh god, are there naughty Minecraft- there, Of course there are. <laughs> uh, but I really like not considering that that could possibly be a thing. Until that one moment. And now that's been taken away from me, so... Thank you so much, OP. <laughs> <laughs> to the surprise of absolutely nobody, of course, Mudbeard had thrown that application away. This would become apparent when we took out the big bin for collection later in the week. Sitting on top of his refuse, there it sat. A faint grease stain where he had gripped it. Bro, he wasn't gonna get the job anyways. Bring this application back smelling like shit, looking like crap. Application all stained to hell and or folded. Never fold an application that you're gonna give to a job. What the hell is that? Listen to me talking about paper applications like that's even a thing anymore. <laughs> Adorable. <laughs> I was angry. Legitimately angry. But I am a man of my word. I had given him three months to find work. Three months he shall have. Oh God, can you do it for two more months? I know I couldn't. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> it's over. You've taken advantage of me enough. You gotta go. But you said three months! Yeah, uh, it's kind of weird. Those last two months got turned into a bus ticket, so... Go back to where you came from and goodbye forever. <laughs> I think you're not even friends on the internet anymore. But indeed, OP later asks Mudbeard about this on AOL Instant Messenger. OP, hey, I noticed the application in the garbage when I went to put the bin out for garbage day. Why aren't you gonna fill it out? You only have two months left to find work, and that's within walking distance. Even for your fat ass. Ooh, the little dig at the end. I like it. Here we go, here we go. <laughs> Dump some vitriol out. Mudbeard. I won't work at some grocery store pushing carts, OP. I'm above that. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, are you, though? I have gifts. I'm good at computers. I'm putting in applications online for remote work as an IT person. With the right computer algorithms, I can hack you back in time. Just like a time machine. I'll find something soon. I promise. Yeah. I'm not sure that watching hentai and grinding a, <laughs> a text-based MMO is really a gift, but... <laughs> okay, two months. Good luck, friend. OP just says, all right, man, just remember your time limit. Lily doesn't even want you here anymore, but I'm doing my best to help you out. Keep your head down and get clean, please. <laughs> Even if he did find the job, 
I would highly recommend kicking him out of the house, lest the stench consume the entire place. You think it's gonna stay confined to, to the room? All he's gotta do is open the door for a little bit, leave it open once, and the house will never be the same. <laughs> Mudbeard. All right, man. I appreciate you doing that. He, in fact, did not appreciate anything, which has been pretty apparent even from the beginning. Taking complete advantage of an internet friend, not saying thank you for anything that's done for him. Hey, you got that application for me? I do appreciate it, bro. Hey, you're cooking me dinner every night? Wow, that is fucking A-plus stellar. You are an amazing person. But instead, he's like, yeah, I deserve this. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> You deserve to go live in a cardboard box on the sidewalk and die of tuberculosis. You worthless human being! Maybe that's a little strong, but maybe not, though. <laughs> <laughs> the week wore on, and soon it was time for our semi-monthly slash semi-annual slash semi-whenever board game night. I'm not one for board games, but Lily quite enjoys them and would denigrate me later that night if I sat them out because I was usually player number three or four needed to make it an actual game. What games you playing there, huh? If it's something cool, uh, maybe I get into it, you know? Little Risk, Monopoly, something like that. There used to be a bar near my house that had uh, Operation and Connect 4, and we would get really smashed playing those games. <laughs> <laughs> That's some good stuff. I haven't played board games recently, but definitely don't sleep on board games. So yeah, OP didn't want in because, uh, quote, I'm an antisocial weirdo. <laughs> I mean, I do feel that too. And board games are in that strange space where, depending on the game, friendships can be lost if all parties are not emotionally mature. Jesus, never had that one happen. <laughs> Now, all participants here were, but I just always had a sour taste in my mouth for board games after a particularly heated game of Monopoly with an ex-friend who, let's just say, was a sore loser on top of being a now meth head. And that is why you added the uh, emotionally mature caveat. Obviously, this ex-friend's decision-making skills were not the strongest regarding either Monopoly or meth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, live and learn, I guess. We'd scheduled for three guests, and only one had arrived. Boo. See, that's the real trouble with board game night. People gotta show up places. Same with, like, tabletop RPGs and all that type of stuff. That's why I like video games. There's always somebody online. <laughs> Much easier. The other two, a couple who stayed together out of pure spite to make the other party miserable, <laughs> had sadly canceled on us. They were endlessly entertaining. In fact, they're still together even to this day, so something must work between them. <laughs> I mean, maybe they're just comfortable in that space. Me and wifey, we... we peck at each other all the time. But the question at the end of the day is, would you rather be with somebody else? And the answer is, hell no. <laughs> this is the best partner. So yeah, you go ahead and peck at me if it makes you feel better and I'll do the same. <laughs> Roundy round we go. They were barbing each other constantly and of course that was just always a show whenever they came over. It does seem like it would be pretty entertaining, honestly. <laughs> They would be missed. Chris, however, arrived with game in hand and a signature taxi slash paperboy cap on, which looked quite fetching on him. I mean, honestly, those paperboy flat caps, I think they're called, they are pretty neckbeard adjacent, but... <laughs> you know, beards attract beards. We're all kind of beardy around here. I can't come at Chris for, for the flat cap because... I tried to rock one for a while as well. <laughs> Chris, hey guys, what's up? We greeted him and after some small talk and light snacking, we tucked into the game. I wish I could remember which one we had played that night, but it's basically irrelevant to this story. 
The game was a few hours long, thankfully something cooperative, and we were in playthrough number two when Chris finally spoke up. Chris, hey, uh, what fucking stinks? <laughs> I hate to be that guy, but something is rank. Bro, the house has already been infested. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> this is not good. Now, I have some rules when it comes to hygiene that I follow to this day. Even at my worst of depression, I still followed these rules. There's a few things that you should always shower before. Sex, company, and venues. Those are good rules. Because, yeah, nobody likes a stinky winky. <laughs> I knew that I was fresh and clean. Lily was very clean as well, so she was not the source. And then it hit us. We had gone nose blind. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> How could you think that you were insulated? That he would just have this den of filth and the rest of the house would be fine? No, no. <laughs> Mudbeard stench had begun to permeate the house, and neither of us recognized it because we'd gone nose blind to it unless he was nearby. <laughs> uh, this is horrible. Lily was visibly mortified, and I was too, frankly. We like to present an air of cleanliness in our home so people would feel comfortable being over. Not sanitized, mind you, clean but lived in and also not fucking stinky <laughs> i appreciate chris calling it like it is i'm surprised he waited so long because if you address it directly it's far less awkward but he played like a full round of whatever game and then <laughs> they're going in for game two and he's like you guys something really does stink though <laughs> oh well let's do some sleuthing it does not take much sleuthing to solve this Scooby mystery. I sighed, OP. Ugh, I didn't think it was that bad. We have a house guest uh, staying with us for a little while. He is um, a little troubled. I'm trying to get him back on his feet. Chris, feet is one way to describe that smell. <laughs> <laughs> Lily was visibly red by now and had quietly excused herself to go upstairs. Oh God, she's going to murder Mudbeard. <laughs> there was a quiet knocking, hushed conversation for several minutes, and some silence before she finally came back down. I retrieved some smell good spray for when the cats make a particularly potent poo and gave our surroundings a few spritzes. A few minutes later, I heard Mudbeard's door open, and then the upstairs bathroom door open, and then the shower turn on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he's scared of Lily. Either that or he really thinks that, like, she'll be into him if he does this. God, what a creep. And you're just letting him live in your house? <laughs> uh, oh, miss me with all this. Whatever Lily had said must have once again put the fear of God into Mudbeard because he was in there for a good 20 minutes, and I'm pretty sure we all heard quiet crying above the sound of the shower. <laughs> this is something that I was all too familiar with. Shower crying is cathartic. Try it sometime. Nah, I'm never going to do that. Shower's a, a special time. It is me time, but it's like, you know... A place where I go to feel refreshed, invigorated. Have you ever eaten an orange in the shower? Just rip it open with your hands and let the juice flow all down your body? God, that's such a primal experience. How about that? How about you try eating an orange in the shower instead of shower crying, right? <laughs> I mean, I'll cry, but it's usually in bed before I drift off to sleep. <laughs> But it's not a joke. <laughs> Doesn't happen too often though, so uh, don't worry about me. We continued our game, but the mood had soured just a little bit, much like the air in the house. 
<laughs> Lily was visibly upset that her image of calm perfection had been tainted. And I was upset that my friend had to endure that smell for so long before ever speaking up. Lily, Chris, I'm so sorry you had to be here for that. I don't think either of us, Lily gave me a pointed look, knew how bad it was. Chris, it's all good. I just wasn't sure and didn't want to be rude, but after a while, oh man, I had to. <laughs> and we all thank you for it. Once the second playthrough of the game had concluded, Chris packed up and bid us good night. Probably couldn't stand to sit in the house any longer. <laughs> He's like, all right, guys, I gotta go breathe the fresh air now. <laughs> oh, oxygen, how I've missed you. <laughs> oh, Chris says, good luck with that one, guys. I don't know if I would have the patience or the nose hairs to deal with that. He, he's right, you know. <laughs> this would not have lasted as long as it did if Red X was on the receiving end. And with that, we were once again a house of three. Mudbeard emerged before the game had concluded. Lily went back upstairs, this time making no effort to be quiet. Lily... You still fucking stink, my beard! What the hell? <laughs> Mudbeard? I showered! I used soap! I washed my hair! I don't know what else you want from me! <laughs> uh, to move out? To be different? To, to just stop everything? Now, bless Lily's heart. But at this point, she actually leaned in and sniffed. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> then gagged, and then puked <laughs> into the upstairs bathroom. She cleaned up and came back downstairs. Mudbeard had retreated back into his nest. <laughs> uh, I don't imagine the idea of your stench being such that a woman pukes when she gets a good nose full of it is a pleasant memory, but it is likely a core one. <laughs> so, uh, there's that. <laughs> he's never gonna forget. Every night before he drifts off to sleep, he's gonna think about that time that he made that woman that he liked puke because she smelled him. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he'll learn. I, I don't know. I remain hopeful, I guess. <laughs> Lily. I don't care what you promised. I want him gone. OP. Look, Lily, I know he's different, but we're both his friend. We deserve to give him a chance and the time that we promised. I'll talk to him about the smell again. <laughs> It doesn't work when you do it, OP. <laughs> Lily's the one that has to do it. And she's basically checked out of this entire situation. Maybe it's for the best if you, if you set them free. That's how baby birds learn to fly, right? You kick them out of the nest. <laughs> you have to do it quite literally in this case. Up I went to Mudbeard's room. He answered the door, teary-eyed. Mudbeard. What do you want? I've had enough tonight, man. Just leave me alone. OP, nah, we're talking. Your smell is overpowering. And if you truly showered, which given the time that you were in the bathroom, I am inclined to agree with, there's probably something else going on, Mudbeard. I told you, I have a glandular problem. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get on some medication or something, boy. OP. No, I don't believe that. Lean over. He did as I asked. I smelled his hair. The aroma of shampoo hit me, surprisingly. The grease was gone. He had, in fact, showered. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! It's a miracle! <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe? <laughs> OP, you did shower. 
Uh, when's the last time you did laundry, Mudbeard? I, uh, I, uh, haven't. <laughs> <laughs> OP? Fucking why? <laughs> A month and he's just recycling his clothes? Oh, God. What a mess of a human being. <laughs> How did he make it this far in life? Oh, Mudbeard says, I don't have laundry detergent. And I'm too afraid to ask y'all if I could use yours because Lily scares me. <laughs> uh, uh. Well, the stinkier you get, the more pissed off she's gonna be, so chew on that for just a little bit. I could tell that in this, he was being genuine. Lily is a frightening force, capable of bringing many men to their knees with her words. She was small, but a lifetime of being raised in conflict gave her a verbal arsenal that was the argumentative equivalent to an orbital strike. There was no escape. Only fallout. <laughs> I got out of the blast, and then I died from cancer a couple years later. Oopy doop, live and learn, I guess. Or, you know, don't live and learn. <laughs> OP, dude, you have my permission. If it bothers you, I'll get you some of your own detergent tomorrow after work so you can do some freaking laundry. A shower won't do shit if you put dirty clothes back on, man. <laughs> Uh, oh, OP, you really are his daddy now. Where are his actual parents? Did they not teach him any of this stuff? How, how, uh, what? <laughs> Mudbeard wiping away tears. Okay, man, I'm really sorry. I'll do better. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> to his credit, he showered at least once every two weeks after that. Oh yeah, twice a month, whether I need it or not. <laughs> uh, still disgusting, but uh, baby steps, I suppose. <laughs> he even did some laundry. Once. <laughs> he was a big old thing of detergent. Oh, thanks, OP. I'll use it once. <laughs> uh, oh, God. The wrap-up is so good, too. After a heated discussion with Lily later that night, I explained the laundry situation, and we agreed, herself reluctantly, that if he continues to shower, he can have the remaining time that I promised him. What will become of our beard? Will he find a job? Will he discover the joys of cleanliness? Will OP kick him out? Will our OP stop eating Ambien? Find out this and more in the exciting conclusion of Mudbeard Z! And there is indeed only one part left of Mudbeard, a short but sweet series, I must say, and it kind of has like some reforming a neckbeard vibes. Do I really think that Mudbeard is going to change all his ways and become a better person from all of this? Uh, not necessarily. It takes a lot of coercion to get him to do basically anything for himself, and this is all stuff that should have been established when he was living with his freaking parents. Although, probably they tried and he wasn't responding, and that's why they ended up kicking him out. So, <laughs> now it's OP's problem. And he is dealing with it in the best way that he can, but... God damn, dude. Uh, you got yourself into this situation, and I am at a loss as to why, honestly. I have a lot of good friends online, but I'm never going to promise somebody three months of rent and food and all this other shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> you would have to be like my best bro. I'd do it for Ramtide, and uh, yeah, that's about the short list. <laughs> Somebody's like, I'm getting kicked out tomorrow. I'm like, you'll, you'll land on your feet. That's all right. I lived in my car a couple times. <laughs> You're going to be fine. You'll figure it out. It's like having a 400 pound rat living in your house, <laughs> sneaking down the stairs, eating cheese out of the fridge. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Cheese! <laughs>
Mudbeard, final part. Departures. Goodbye, Mudbeard. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> you know the rules, and so do I. Say goodbye. Freaking subscribe to RedX.Carl. <laughs> yeah, totally. I, I don't know who Carl is. Uh, also, Link Swarm. Hey, part one, part two, all this stuff down in the description if you guys are interested in uh, going back in time just a little bit. Hello, Reddit readers, guys, and gals, and all the colors of our beautiful rainbow. And hello to you, lovely Luca was a race car. <laughs> Not even lovely. And it doesn't say driver at the end, which I do expect because I can't get Primus out of my head, apparently. Your humble OP here to tie up this series with a neat little bow. It's been a pleasure recounting this part of my life. Short though it was, it was memorable. <laughs> yes, very likely memorable for all the wrong reasons. This is not the sort of memory that I want to have. <laughs> we spend a lot of time in my head during this final entry. I hope it's not too scary in there, although I do kind of like it when you really, really put us into your shoes. It's kind of like the Stealth Beard OP did, you know what I mean? I don't mind waxing poetic every once in a while. Last time on Mudbeard Z! Mudbeard had moved into the home of OP and his girlfriend Lily after getting forcibly removed from his parental beard nest. For good reason, probably. He was recently revealed as a reticent ricotta robber, <laughs> took an actual shower, and seemed to be genuinely remorseful of his actions, though he did never admit to said cheese thievery. ROP still harbors doubts. He was looking for a job online. Will he be successful in his employment endeavor? Stay tuned and find out on this episode of Mudbeard Z! Today's episode, Departures, Mudbeard's Final Form. That voice messed me up a little bit. <laughs> That's not too bad. I think there is some, some spoilers in the episode title, no? <laughs> Will he be successful in the employment endeavor? Also, the episode is titled Departures, so you take from that what you will. <laughs> and I definitely do. It doesn't really matter whether or not OP was the one that ate that entire block of cheese because Mudbeard would have, you know what I mean? <laughs> He's not above doing that. He's taken advantage of you in plenty other ways. So why not just throw the cheese on top of the pile, right? Uh, of course, we've got our disclaimer. Beards are gross. Gross things will be discussed. And I was suicidal during this time of my life. If you made it to part three of this, then you know what you signed up for. <laughs> it's not the worst beard story that we've ever had. But yeah, he is definitely a stinky boy. So if that gets to you, it gets to me a little bit sometimes. But if it gets to you, you can feel free to jump out. I, I am here. I'm freaking strapped in for the long haul. <laughs> the cast, of course, we've got OP. That's a me. A walking series of mistakes, but tries his best to human properly. Oh God, J preach. I feel so seen with that statement. <laughs> uh, Lily was OP's at the time girlfriend. They were incompatible. She had a fiery temper and was prone to being demeaning. Did I slap the leg beard label on her or, or did OP? I can't quite recall. But she's definitely got some, some leg beard tendencies looking down her nose at other people like that. Eventually, I do hope to have a saga with, with her and we can see all the, the dirty bits and pieces. Not in a weird way. <laughs> but just maybe. Uh, show me what she's got, you know? I want to see the ugliness, too. In this series, she's been kind of like a hero, telling Mudbeard what he needs to do and such. <laughs> and of course, we do have Mudbeard. Our subject of study and neckbeard of the hour. Allergic to showers, he has a glandular problem, uh, and is chronically unemployed. By choice, let's be clear on that. Or maybe not by choice. If he really does stink all the time, who's going to hire him? 
<laughs> That's just terrible. Come on, Mudbeard, get it together. You had three months to get it together. Maybe this time you'll actually get it together. He's not going to get it together. And with all that out of the way, let us dive into this fresh neckbeard content. Yes, please, feed me. I'm hungry. <laughs> Mudbeard mostly kept to himself. Whether that was out of fear or pure beardery is a subject of debate for future scholars. My money is on a little bit of both. He rarely emerged from his growing nest. He would shower once a week, <laughs> whether he needs it or not, <laughs> uh, protesting the entire time. And as I said in an earlier installment, laundry was a rarity. Every now and then, he would emerge to return dishes to the sink, although he never actually did those dishes. And every night he would venture downstairs for his nightly food offering. It's like having a fucking 400 pound rat living in your house. <laughs> Sneaking down the stairs, eating cheese out of the fridge. I can't have none of that, man. <laughs> squeak, squeak, squeak. Cheese! <laughs> Showering once a week. Okay, I guess baby steps. Laundry was a rarity, considering he only stayed three months. How rare? How many times did he actually do laundry? Like, twice? <laughs> uh, that is quite rare. And yes, I just hate the thought of somebody going through my fridge at night while I'm trying to sleep for his food offering. I fed you. I fed you three square meals and you still want some more. You gotta go. You gotta go, Beardo. <laughs> I would ask him once every few days how the job search was going, and every time his reply would be, uh, It's fine. <laughs> I got lots of applications in, and I'm doing more every day. It's just a matter of time. <laughs> yes, I suppose everything is just a matter of time if... We're on a cosmic time scale. Give Mudbeard a billion years and eventually he'll probably get a job. <laughs> or, you know, the heat death of the universe. Whichever one comes first. <laughs> I know which one my money's on. Now, by now, dear readers, I knew this to be a lie. Mudbeard was not a hard man to read. He was just a hard man to smell. <laughs> he wasn't looking for a job. Most of the time he was playing some asinine robot game. I know this because he wouldn't stop talking about it. <laughs> uh, you blew up your own cover, Mudbeard, because you can't stop talking about Gundams. <laughs> or some awful role play that he loved bragging about wherein he was the Gary Stu saving all the ladies, Or he was the, in his words, the most compelling villain. This, my friends, was projection. You don't say. <laughs> He's not a compelling human, so how can he make a compelling role play? That's pretty basic, is it not? I don't like to toot my writer slash role play horn. I will. I'll toot it for you. Come here. Beep, beep. <laughs> but he desperately wanted to be a writer slash role player on the same level as Lily and myself. He was at best a pale imitation and at worst an unwitting parody. Woo, shots fired. But also, you know, you got to tell the truth. <laughs> if his writing is not up to snuff, then the kind thing to do is to let him know and be like, look, Maybe you should work on this or that, but I think he's basically allergic to working on himself in any capacity, so I don't know if it's going to happen. <laughs> As a matter of fact, yeah, I do know if it's going to happen, and the answer's no. No, it's never going to happen. <laughs> but why did I allow him to stay with us, despite his lies? Well, because I truly did believe that he was our last refuge before homelessness, and because part of me did want to believe that he could reform. Hands up, not hands out. Oh yeah, I guess, uh, but shouldn't he need to like pull himself up by the bootstraps or something? 
he made the bed. Now go lay down. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. You're a nicer guy than me, Luca. That that is what I'll say. <laughs> Plus, I promised him three months. Lily, by this time, had all had all but begun pretending that he didn't exist at all. It was either that or berate him every time he dared to poke his head out. <laughs> God, Lily is terrifying, isn't she? I would thank her. She does seem to be, like, more protagonist than antagonist in this entire saga. She's keeping this beard in line so he doesn't, like, 100% walk all over everybody. I, I gotta thank her at least a little bit, and so should you, OP. I'm sorry your relationship uh, didn't work out the way that you had hoped, but <laughs> she served. She served her purpose well. Most of our communication was done via AIM. Despite us living in the same house, despite being able to literally hear him talking to friends on Skype or his robot or anime waifu games, <laughs> he preferred to communicate with us, his roommates, via text. He's a weird guy, man. I think he is partially scared. Especially if Lily is berating him at every twist and turn. He doesn't really know you guys in person, just from online. And he never made the attempt to get himself comfortable enough to, to hang out and whatnot. But honestly, OP preferred that way. Every time his door opened, the miasma would spill downstairs like Hexus from Fern Gully went on a weekend bender. <laughs> Uh, Hexus from Ferngully. When I was six years old, I cried. Hexus from Ferngully made me cry. Legit. <laughs> I was in a first grade classroom. They're like, let's watch this show. And I'm pretty much the only kid that fucking cried over Ferngully. I don't want to talk about it. I mean, I just kind of spilled it, but... <laughs> uh, that's buried deep in the Red X lore. We had both grown acutely aware of the beard nest currently evolving in our guest room, and the subject of cleaning it up if and when he left was broached more than once. <laughs> Lily insisted that since it was my idea, it was my job to do, and honestly, she was right. Own your mistakes. I mean, that is the way to look at it. <laughs> you invited him in, and, uh, you gotta deal with the consequences, honestly. Being beard adjacent myself at the time, I was the one ready to shirk responsibility given any opportunity, but if my memory serves, we eventually agreed to tackle it together, should the time come. Why should the time come? Three months! That's it! Then you're out! Go! <laughs> I can't have this. I can't I can't live like this anymore. And it's nice of Lily to eventually be like, yeah, I guess I'll help you out with it. I'll help you clean up your own mistakes. You know she's going to degrade you for it in the process, but a little help while being degraded is better than no help working in silence. Or maybe that's wrong. I probably would rather work in silence, come to think of it. Two weeks before the time limit, I approached the den of beardery that had grown like something from Akira. I don't get that reference. The smell hit me nine feet from the door. <laughs> it was overpowering, to put it lightly. Two additional bedrooms were upstairs, but the second story belonged to the beard for now. We must oust him. Grab your torches and pitchforks. We'll run him out on the rail. Tar and feather him. <laughs> I knocked on the door, and when it opened, it was like a train of onion, marinated in B.O. and caked in baby batter. Oh, God! <laughs> oh! Ew! Dude! What the f- uh, Had ran me over. That is so evocative, OP. Please, let's not <laughs> anymore. Uh, uh, I physically reeled back from the pure shock of it. So powerful 
was this fog that it did 1d4 toxic damage to me. <laughs> uh, God, I don't understand how he could just live like this. Oh, please let it be over. All I could manage was a fuck, man, before Mudbeard cut me off. What the fuck do you want? He snapped at me. Oh, 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 we getting a little too comfortable in here, ain't we, Mudbeard? Why don't you pack your shit up right now? Get out of my house! Get the fuck out! You, you just gotta raise your voice, see? I'm not actually mad, I'm just being loud. <laughs> <laughs> but it does manage to scare most people. Oh, yes. With every moment that moved the hand closer to destiny, his mood IRL became more and more dour. We both knew what was coming, and we played at pleasantries for long enough, it seems. Two weeks, Mudbeard. That's all you've got left. I know you want something remote, but you and I both know that you haven't been filling out applications. I began. <laughs> That's not true! Mudbeard protested loudly. This is between you and Jesus, alright? We both know that you're lying. <laughs> I don't care enough to prove it, but the proof is in the pudding, is it not? The proof is in the pooping. <laughs> I've been spending my time while you guys were at work looking for a job. Nobody's hiring, man. I swear I've been looking. Look, continue to lie to yourself if you need to, but I don't want to hear it anymore. <laughs> if I saw any results, just one interview, I might think differently about it. But it's pretty convenient how he's only looking for a job while they are at work, right? That's why you haven't seen me doing it. No, I haven't seen you doing it because you haven't been fucking doing it. <laughs> I just look like this, okay? I'm not stupid. <laughs> Mudbeard, that's bullshit. Our work is hiring and I have straight up told you to apply. I keyed my boss into your situation and he was willing to schedule you around me or Lily's schedule to help get you on your feet, but he never got anything from you he's he's so determined not to succeed this is kind of like incel tears the other day isn't it <laughs> he's choosing to be miserable he's choosing to fail i'm not fucking settling for some boring dispatcher job op i've got the skills to work remote i just need to find something that was rich Two dispatcher jobs were paying for a house and his fucking food. I sighed and immediately regretted the deep inhale that a sigh required. <laughs> uh, oh, good God. <laughs> it's terrible, dude. The fact that he's so far up his own ass about how great he is and he's going to work remote, etc., etc., just take the job that you can get. You can continue looking for your magical dream job once you're paying some bills around here, okay? But he's not hes not even gonna try. He just lays down and he's like, drag me. <laughs> drag me all the way to the finish line. Okay, I put in word with my boss. He'll give you a job. He's like, no, that's not the job. That's not the way I want to be carried. <laughs> Okay, then, lay there and die, I guess. Two weeks, Mudbeard. That is your time limit. Two weeks passes slowly when you're dreading making someone homeless. I stayed up at night when I wasn't eating Ambien like Pez, wondering what the morality of my steadfast decision to hold him to three months actually was. You're doing him a favor. Everybody else has had a weak hand with him. The only way that he's going to learn, strong hand. Keep your pimp hand strong, Luca. <laughs> uh, that's a reference to the prostitute Pearl story. On the one hand, I had given Mudbeard every opportunity to succeed on his own. I'm not a person who will hold your hand, but I will give you the tools. On the other hand, I was about to doom a man to life on the streets. 
life on the streets ain't so bad. You ain't gonna die if you live on the streets for a little bit, all right? I've done it for uh, a few months a couple of times. Ramtide's done it for the better part of a fucking decade. Living on the streets, it ain't so bad. If anything, it will motivate him to, to start doing better. <laughs> Carrying around his PC in a shopping cart. There you go. This is what you picked. You reap what you sow. As the time approached, he had stopped coming down for his nightly supper, waiting until we had gone to bed to scavenge for leftovers. We no longer talked over AIM, nor did we talk in person. The only time that he left his room was to use the bathroom. At least you're not going in there finding, like, bottles of piss <laughs> once he's gone. Oh my god, we gotta clean out all these Mountain Dew bottles that ain't filled with Mountain Dew. <laughs> God damn, dude. He thinks that just by avoiding the situation, maybe OP will just be like, well, I don't know. I can't knock on his door to go talk to him, right? No, this is my fucking house. I'm gonna knock on that door in no time flat. Your head is gonna spin with how fast I put you on the streets. I don't care. Three months? <laughs> I'm not giving you one extra day. Dawn of the final day. 24 hours remain. The day began much like any other. I awoke, surprised to be awake again, despite doing my best Pac-Man impersonation with sleeping pills. Amaka, amaka, amaka. It's not as funny as it sounds. <laughs> Uh, should laugh at that. Should laugh at that. But it is... <laughs> it is absurd. I, I trundled to work with Lily and had an average day. It was an average day, for all intents. Aside from the grim task that lay ahead of me at home. This was one of the few days where I lingered after work, making small talk with co-workers to put off the inevitable... But, as all things do, time marched ever forward, and before I knew it, I was in front of Mudbeard's door. Again. A decision made, and stealing my resolve for the confrontation. Ugh. This is what you get when you invite Beards into your home. It's not gonna end in a really cool, like, hey, this is my new roommate that I knew from online, and now we're best friends forever. It's only going to end with a confrontation when you finally get the nuts up to kick him out. And yes, the longer you wait, the more awkward it is. So I think <laughs> saying, okay, time's up. I've let you know when the time is up and now the time is actually up. That will show him that you mean business, right? Knock, knock, knock. Mudbeard. It's fate. <laughs> Silence. Knock, knock, knock. Mudbeard! It's destiny! <laughs> uh, you can't avoid me forever, bitch. <laughs> what? Came a timid yet somehow intimidating voice from the other side. Open the door, Mudbeard. We need to talk. And surely enough, the door did open, and surely enough, the stench did hit me. I did my best to ignore the olfactory offensive. That's right, it's not going to be here forever. In fact, today is the day when it starts to lessen. Congratulations to you, OP. <laughs> Your two weeks is up, Mudbeard. I'm kicking you out, I stated flatly. You can't do this. I'll be homeless. What am I supposed to do with my computer? The desperation in his voice was real. Get a storage unit. I don't know what to tell you. You've got to go. And OP says as much. Not my problem, Mudbeard. I again stated flatly. I hated being the bad guy. I still feel bad about this, even today. <laughs> Fuck you, OP! He screamed, tears now streaming down his face, carving tracks of moisture through his greasy continents. I've got nowhere to go. You can't kick me out. You're literally signing my death warrant if you kick me out. 
Did I not go over this before? Living on the streets is not a death warrant. You are going to be fine. <laughs> You'll suffer a bit, but Lord knows that maybe you deserve it. If you do some suffering on the streets, you'll be that much more grateful for the free three months of rent and food that was provided for you, right? Y you would start busting your ass to find a job and maintain this standard of living that you've gotten so used to, right? <laughs> I think uh, a little while on the streets will be real good for you, Mudbeard. Three months, Mudbeard, I said. I gave you three months! I knew by the end of month one that you were using us, but I still gave you three. You had every chance to meet my very simple terms, I continued. One, get a job. Two, get a vehicle. Three, become independent. I was so willing to help you, Mudbeard. I wanted to help you. I wouldn't have taken you in if I didn't believe that you could be a better person. You stopped at the starting line, Mudbeard. Hell yeah, he did. Laid down face first. He's like, drag me. Drag me. <laughs> I can't swim. You just have to save me. <laughs> <laughs> Pathetic, dude. You threw away all the applications that I gave you. You ignored job recommendations that I gave you. It's clear that you just do not want to work. Look, man. Few people actually want to work, but we do it because we want to live comfortably. You've taken advantage of that comfort for three months, but now it's over. I refuse to allow you to leech off of us. Ah, oh, well said, OP. He, see, he's not even getting like uppity or anything, not calling names. He's like, look, I did this. I tried to extend to you this opportunity and you slapped my hand away. So guess what? Get out. <laughs> Three months. It's such a long time to, to find a job. If you're really busting ass, nose to the grindstone, you can find a job in that time. I don't care how bad the market is. McDonald's is always hiring. Mostly because it's a shitty job. Hopefully you take that one and continue to look for a new one. But you got to do what you got to do is my point. <laughs> I've done plenty of jobs that I didn't like none too much. Working at a gas station was one of them. I'm like, ugh, this is the worst. And with 12-hour shifts at that. So, yeah, I get it. <laughs> Some jobs suck. But do you like living in a house? Then you gotta do it. That's just how it be. Ugh. This is bullshit. <laughs> Mudbeard said between sobs. I'm unsure of whether these were crocodile tears or genuine. Ah, uh, definitely crocodile tears. I'm gonna put money on it. <laughs> Say that he's just an empty hole that doesn't feel anything inside because it makes it that much easier to kick him onto the street, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, sound logic there. <laughs> I am not, however, without a heart. I'll pay for a Greyhound ticket. You have one additional month. Use it however you like. However, at the end of this month, I am dropping you off at the Greyhound station. That is, of course, unless you get a job in that time. In that case, we're prepared to allow you to stay longer so that you can get on your feet. OP, OP! The pimp hand was so strong and I just saw it go limp, like meh. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, get out of my house! Actually, you can have one more month. It's okay. Oh my god! Your pimp pants shriveled up! How did this happen? <laughs> uh, come on, bro! You were doing so good. So good! Turn that additional month into the Greyhound ticket, alright? He didn't get three free months, he got four! He got a third of a year! Jesus Christ. <laughs> I paused. Mudbeard was quiet, listening. But we both know that that's not going to happen, so make arrangements to leech off of somebody else or pick a city where you'd prefer to be homeless. One month. Tell me what city you've chosen, and I'll buy the ticket. Good night, Mudbeard. Wh Luca! <laughs> 
Not one more month. You said today's the day. It's time to go. This time I didn't wait for a response. I turned around and went downstairs. Throughout the night, we heard the muffled crying of Mudbeard, and I felt awful. I consigned a man that I had taken in to almost certain homelessness. In a way, it was my fault for allowing him in. I made a promise and allowed myself to be used. You definitely don't blame yourself for that one. I mean, I wouldn't have taken him in, but that's mostly because I don't really know him from Bob. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just some online stranger that I guess I've been friends with for a while and allow him into my house for three months? No, dude, I'm good. Let nature take its course. If you're gonna be homeless, why put it off for three months? <laughs> There's a reason that his parents kicked him out of the house, right? That might make me seem heartless, but it is how I feel. <laughs> I don't think that I would have done this. Uh, but if you decided to do this, yeah, it wouldn't be your fault that he insists on being a piece of shit. That is madness. I honestly wish there were more beardy shenanigans during this month, but it was punctuated by a sour atmosphere. Almost no sightings of him beyond the occasional bathroom trip. Two weeks into his final month, he sent me a terse aim message that he'd found someone to take him in, and the location of a Greyhound station a few states away. So I booked the ticket. Until that point, I had still held out hope that somehow, through all of this, he would get his shit together and knuckle down and get a job. Hope floats, man. <laughs> we both know that's not happening, right? <laughs> My hope was gone within the first month. I had hope that maybe, Perhaps this ultimatum would awaken a sense of urgency to grow up. That message made it all come crashing down around my ears. And I won't lie, it was me who cried that night. I mean, you lost a friend of years because of this situation. It does hurt, it does suck, but it's not your fault at all, OP. He made the decisions that led to this. I wanted him to be better. I wanted him to at least do the bare minimum and find some work. Hell, I'd have been willing to give him some wiggle room if he pitched in around the house or made any effort to remain clean or hell, socialized with us in person rather than over AIM. But he came into our home, took over a room, ate our food and just nested until we finally had enough. Yeah, he's made no efforts at all. <laughs> <laughs> and that is how I knew within the first month that you need to get rid of him. You didn't just give him the, the three months that you promised. You gave him four months. Oh, I'll never understand that. I would have put him out on the street that night. <laughs> I will pick up your bed with you on it and, and put it out the window. <laughs> I'm not playing games here. No additional months. It's over. You didn't make any plans when I counted the days down for you, that's not my problem. Again, maybe I'm heartless, but <laughs> he knew it was coming. Uh, so apparently we weren't even Mudbeard's last option since he was going somewhere else. We were just another rube in a series of people that he had conned into letting him couch surf for a while. Yeah, three, four months, that's quite a fucking while. <laughs> Uh, no, no. See, you shouldn't feel bad for him. He lined up something else. He's not gonna be homeless. I don't know how many friends he has, but eventually, I, I do think that a few nights on the street would really kick him into gear. <laughs> on one hand, I was furious that he lied about so much, but on the other hand, it made my decision to give him the boot much more bearable. He wouldn't be homeless, but... A man in his mid-twenties burned a long, long friendship for a few months of relative comfort without a job. I still don't know whether he felt any kind of remorse over what he did. Two weeks goes by a lot faster when you have a clear conscience. The day of his departure finally arrived and went without much fanfare. I refused to help him in any capacity aside from actually driving. We spent the 40-minute drive to the bus station in silence. <laughs> Awkward. 
Once I'd confirmed that his belongings were removed from my truck, we exchanged tense goodbyes before I left. And just like that, Mudbeard was gone. His stink would remain in my truck for several days. <laughs> A grim reminder of every commute of treachery, thievery, and betrayal. God damn. He probably does feel some remorse over it, but not because of conscience, not because of friendship, anything like that. Just because he wanted it to go on for longer. <laughs> He's going through all of his friends looking for the, the weakest willed one that he can milk and just not have to ever get a job. I can't stand people like this. I respect people that hustle. And Mudbeard is, I mean, he hustles, but he's so determined to hustle so he doesn't have to hustle. You know what I'm saying? And that's the worst kind of hustle to have. Does that make any sense? I guess it does. <laughs> uh, good Lord. Now we're into the epilogue. Cleaning the nest took several days, several weeks of open windows and criminal amounts of Lysol, Pine Sol, and vigorous bathroom scrubbing. Yeah, you know he peed on the floor. His dirty Mountain Dew beard piss. <laughs> there were stains on the bedroom wall by his computer that I'd rather not think about. Oh, God, no! <laughs> uh, I thought we were through the woods! We were in the epilogue! I thought I was safe. <laughs> oh, man. That's heavy. <laughs> About five days after I dropped him off, I saw him online on AIM, so wherever he ended up, he did have internet access. We never spoke again. I saw him online frequently until AIM service finally went offline and I lost touch with him. Did it go offline? I think I logged into AIM a couple years ago. <laughs> you still can, I think. Well... Out of curiosity, I did try googling his old username, and all that came up was an old live journal from 2007, so I honestly don't know what's become of Mudbeard, but I'd be lying if I said that I didn't wish that he was okay. Somewhere out there, having learned how to adult properly. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> he is a user, but he's not the worst beard that we've ever seen. There's still a glimmer of hope for him. I wonder if he lied about how we treated him, the way that he talked of the people that he left us for. He made them sound monstrous and unfeeling. It really tugged at my heartstrings and swayed my decision to take him in. Looking back, huh, maybe he was a better storyteller than I gave him credit for. <laughs> that's not telling a story, that's really just emotional manipulation. That's his one skill, manipulating people. And it didn't work on you, Luca, so proud of you. I wish that this story had a better ending. Some epic comeuppance for a beard that used us, or the reformation and reconnection of a former beard who took a lesson away from burning a friendship for temporary neatness. But, like so many beard stories, the lesson to take away is that there's rarely happy endings when beards are involved. All we can really do is damage control and try to learn something from this experience. <sighs> what did we learn today? Nothing. <laughs> Don't take in friends from the internet. <laughs> no apologies for my writing or grammar. Own your mistakes! Take care, readers. I have encounters with other beards, some of which I may write about. But until then, Luca out. So, I'm kind of in the same camp as Luca, I do suppose. I hope that this beard gets things figured out and becomes a better person, but Lord knows he has got a long way to go. I haven't seen any exhibition of his amazing skills that entitle him to a, a remote working job, but maybe he did find it. Maybe those skills do exist. I have heavy doubts about all of that. <laughs> <laughs> but I I've been wrong plenty of times before, and part of me does hope that I'm wrong about this one. I have no doubts at all that the dude talked shit about both you and Lily once he got to the new house, but 
I guess that doesn't really matter because you guys were 100% disconnected. You didn't know the people that he went to stay with, so who really cares? <laughs> I would have unfriended him on AIM, let him know that this bridge was burnt, but I think Lucas still wanted to keep the door open just so he could express some form of regret someday if he were so inclined, but oh my god, dude. It is a, a difficult pill to swallow. I'm not sure exactly how long him and OP were friends, but apparently it was it was long enough, and this dude burned it all down for four months of staycation. Sad. It really is a sad story. His own laziness <laughs> is what made all of this happen. It's, it's so not hard to, to go out and get a job, but yeah, he's determined to not do it. It's probably why he got kicked out of his parents' house. Probably why he got kicked out of the house that he got kicked out of before showing up at Luca's. Uh, there really should be no sympathy given to this man because I still stand firm by him spending a month, even a week, on the streets. He would realize that, oh my god, I need to get my shit together. <laughs> this is what happens if I don't have a job. Oh, I guess I'd better go get a job. Might be the only way that he learns. Might be that uh, that is exactly what happens. And maybe he did get it turned around after that. Or maybe he's still out there living on the street somewhere. If you see a homeless guy, a big fat homeless guy with a computer in his shopping cart, say hello to Mudbeard. <laughs> uh, uh, probably not the highest note to go out on, but I find that rather funny. I do hope that you guys enjoyed this series. If you did, I hope that you like, comment, and or subscribe. That's a, a pretty big brain play. The biggest brain play, of course, would be sharing the episode around, sharing the compilation around once that one comes out. We've also got links down in the description, uh, plugs, playlists, podcasts. I am everywhere. You know, Spotify, iTunes, Deezer, whatever the hell, CastBox. <laughs> I don't know where you listen to podcasts, but hopefully you'll listen to Red X over there. We've also got social medias down in the description. Uh, Twitter, Discord, Facebook, Twitch. Yes, we stream this one live on Twitch. It was beautiful. I loved it. Thank you guys all so much for coming. <laughs> I also got my Patreon, of course, my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons, whom I would like to thank Jerry, Jerry much, as I do every episode. Uh, so thank you. Dark Flushes, Harley Hogan, Robert Allen Waits, Camille Sarah, Chase the Blue Kraken, Malala Malala. Roxanne Wolf, Sip, Jerry, Conrad Ingame, A Wire, Jerry. All I want for Christmas is do. Hey, Mr. Red Exer, still haven't heard from Landlord, Jerry. Ah, oh, that's all right, I see him, he's still giving me money. Cool out. <laughs> Captain Cloud, Jerry, Hong Kong, Destiny Piper, Aaron, Jerry, Alexis Smith, Broken Logic, Esteban, Frog, Black Side, Irary. Feels unwanted, but keeps on fighting anyways. You do the thing. Silent Revolver, PCB, the original Jerry, Jerry, Tick Jerry, Jerry, Skatune, Satori, 11 Jerry, the two Jerrys. <laughs> a Jerry ready for springtime. A Jerry of Jubilee, Jubilee, Jerry, such as Jerry, Dodian Jerry, Aspen, a Sense Jerry, Bang Bang, Aurora Wildheart, Grizzly, <laughs> Baby Jerry, Bailey Joy, Bearded Jerry, Bitch Gremlin, Blade the Hero, Blipple Jerry, Catholic Jerry, Commander J Tank, Confederate Jew, Dennis Dayton, Disposable Wife, Dr. Lux, Emergent Jewel, Aaron Era, East Bars, Frozen Over Studio, Fire Drake, Gypsy, Hadrian BR, I'm Slim Jerry, I'm the real Jerry, I'm the Slim Jerry, such as imitating Irish pirates. The Jerry's are always after me, lucky charms. <laughs> Ray Hated Jam, Itchy Nuts, just scratch him, bro. A pimp named J Chris, JM Coon, Jerry Blacktail, Jerry Nice, Jerry Evil, Jerry Outlaw, Mother Trucker, John Hero, John Jerry, Jingle Heimer Schmidt. Oh my God, that's my name too, bro. <laughs> K J W, Kajow, Crewy, Landlord Jerry, Legitimate Girl, Miss Monday, Lord Jerry, like and subscribe. The Lady Dicks, match with the guy on Tinder. His name was Jerry, and he showed me a sword. I think I'm in love. <laughs> Is that all it takes these days? These kids. Melgar the Destroyer, Metal Factor, Needless King 89, Nightmare Jerry, or Game Steve, Bean Tom with a bag of marbles from downtown. While Jerry Beck, forgive this. Oh snap, I saw the whole thing. I was the marbles. <laughs> Paragon Soul, Band of the Pines, Jerry Kins and Jerry Beth, Queens, Quay Lunes, and Quag Myers, Ramtide Lacrimates, Rose, Jerry Miller, TSM Kirby, Sorry to the Lolita, Saucy Octopus, Saw, Scarlet's coming, Sergeant Gay Cop, Bring up the law, Silo Whip, Stephanie Gunner, Sign Up, Boom Stick, Brilliant Tomato, Tapio, Blue, Tato Fair, Tenton Monster, The Italian Greyhound, Dino, The Littlest Who, The Tiniest Boy, <laughs> Little Tiny, I like it, The Marble, The Jerry, The, The, <laughs> oh, The What's Your Fuzz Game, Try to find another marble to get back to the real world, uh, you probably don't want to blow into that balloon, not, yeah, it's a stinky balloon. <laughs> Uh, Unbusy B, V3 Prime, Vanguard Angel, Viking Jerry, Wiki Tech, Will Max, Zephyr the Gargoyle, or Clay, Void Set, Collector of Cringe, <laughs> Conrad Mooney, Kira, not another Jerry, but he is though, Redwood, Nog Viper, Saints, Blessing, Third Stuff, Venom Jerry, Jace Christensen, One Leg Jerry's beaten Negative with a fake leg, <laughs> a normal Jerry, uh, no funny line this time, my wits are on vacation, no, no problem with that, mine too I guess, <laughs> Hunter of Jerry's, the power of all things tasty, it is Tom, Admiral T-Tank, Emerald Alder, another stupid hipster, Atomic Jerryzilla, Breaker of the Tom Army, Badger Coon, Bartender Kelia, Broken Spine Horse Radish, the original different Jerry, an S Cake Jerry, California Jerry Girl, Shepard Seven Lock, Corporal Admiral, Lieutenant Private General, Tiger, Princess Warrior, Woo Jerry, Crypt Cities, D Crazy, aka SDI Jerry, Devon Jerry, Creator, Fellow, Click Clacks, Dopamine Dane, Jerryus, Dwarfy Dude, Ghost of Apple, He Cannot, 
Holy Berry, Jerry. <laughs> Janitor, Jerry, that's my marbles. Didn't work. Now I'm hiding from the KGB. Jeffrey, Jeffrey. Jerry to Rivia, Jerry and Tom versus Happy New Year's Wavy Apocalypse. Jerry the Sussy Baka. Jerry's mom has got it going on. Check out the mustache on Jerry Aldo Rivera. Jerry Roxas. <laughs> Jerry Roleplay Game. Judge, Jerry and Executioner. Keaton Tails. Kid Marvelous. King Tom. Kids Kid. Life of Guardian. Little A. Woods. Lucia Lovecraft. Mama Machia. CD. Maybe next time Milk Fed Gimmins Duchess Not Invisible Angel. Patreon has more than one royal Jerry. So they say. Raptor. She is my Jerry Pie. Snarry. That's snob Jerry. Spooky the Rogue. Spoopy Scary Jerry Ton. Techno Dubs. The original Jerry. To Infinity Jerry. And beyond. No and yes, respectively. <laughs> Tuna Fish Jerry. Uncale. Underwater movies. Formerly the X card. Unfortunate Jerry. Screaming at Nookie's latest magical girl transformation. Mega Stop. Whoa. Who is this soul patched imposter? Hmm? We all know the real Red X has gray skin and no eyes. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> Top promise. Jerry Swift. Oh, no, bad Jerry. Top people. Boy, Swift. 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 Of course, thank you all very, very much, Jerry's and not Jerry's alike. <laughs> I cannot thank you enough. End of the month, just around the corner, so uh, prepare thine selves. If anybody else could sign up, that would be absolutely massive. But if you can't afford to do it right now, don't sweat it too hard, friends. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you need to keep yourself safe out there, wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe like, uh, watching some old Red X videos. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. Is it weird if I watch my own videos? I don't know. Probably. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys as always for watching. I shall see you in the next one and until then friends, bye-bye. Uh,